Tracy. And I'm Rahana Power. And today we have Alia Brandt joining us. Hello. Hi, how's it going? Going good. Great. We are really excited to have you on today. Thanks for hopping on, taking the time. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm yeah. also very excited. <laughs> <laughs> It'll, uh, we, we do have a lot to, to kind of dive in and talk about, but before we do, just to get to know you a little bit on a, just a more personal, uh, you know, level, uh, a personal <laughs> Alia level. Can you tell us something kind of fun, interesting, unique about you? Uh, it could be a special talent or just something maybe unexpected um, that people don't necessarily know about. Yeah, um, for sure. I think the the like fun fact about me that kind of catches <laughs> a lot of people off guard um, when they first meet me or whenever this kind of comes up is that I grew up overseas. Um, I grew up from the ages of four to 18 in various African countries. So Senegal, Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya. And then I moved back to the States for college um, to Northern California. And that's pretty much where I've been since. (laughs) Wow. Okay. So what, how did, what, what like led to you growing up and moving around Africa for so long? Yeah, um, completely due to my mother's career. (laughs) Um, She's a public health officer, so she's worked all over Africa um, doing HIV and AIDS uh, work and outreach and um, stuff like that. That's amazing. Yeah, it's she's very cool. And I I wouldn't change my childhood for anything. It was definitely Mm -hmm. unique. And um, but it was it was really cool. No kidding. That's that's amazing. Africa is definitely, a place, especially Kenya, is definitely a place that's on my bucket list, pretty high up there. So I love that that's part of your your story. Um, yeah, definitely. Big part. Yeah. You said Kenya, right? Yeah. Yep. Kenya. Awesome. I went to high school there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that so much. <laughs> yeah. So if you go, let me know. I'll definitely give you recommendations and stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to hit, yeah. hit you it's, up on that. It's <laughs> a great place. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, all right. So kind of diving in um, to why, you know, what we're here to really chat about. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us just to to kind of get started? Like, how did you even like get into film? Like what brought you into the film world? Yeah, I think what brought me into the film world is just a love of film. Um <laughs> Because as far back as I can remember, I've just, I've loved movies. I've been a little obsessed. Um, I used to have this like party trick with my family where they would say a movie title and I would recite lines from it. And that was the whole game. (laughs) Um, So I've just, I've always loved movies a lot. And then as I grew up, um, I've always been a writer, but I didn't realize I wanted to write film. I thought I wanted to act in film mainly. Um, and so throughout my youth, I did like musical, local musical theater stuff and um, stuff like that. And then as I got older, I was like, oh, no, I want I definitely want to be acting for camera, <laughs> like for stories. Um, and so I kind of pursued that a bit more. And then I had this transition. And now I am mainly a writer director. Um, but, you know, I still love acting, but I really consider myself as a filmmaker, a writer director. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love that you you have that quirk of doing, you know, the the movie quotes and everything. Um, we do that a lot in my house, so I, I fully understand. <laughs> um, although we'll do the opposite where one of us will do a, a line or two and be like, all right, so what movie? <laughs> Oh yeah, no, um, for sure. There's a lot of those like inside jokes in my family. Yes. Where all of a sudden, we're just doing a scene from The Big Lebowski. Yeah, <laughs> he's like just there for dinner. Is like, wait, what is happening? <laughs> so, what's your favorite? Maybe one or two favorite movies to do to do lines from, or that oh, you yeah. just find are really easy yeah. to, to do lines from. Well, I I already mentioned it, but I gotta say The Big Lebowski. <laughs> of course. Um, that's many people in my family's favorite movie. Sorry, Alan, what was that? No, I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good one. Um, and very Minnesota topical. Um, it's set yeah. in LA, I guess, but the Coen brothers. Um, yeah, The Big Lebowski is a big one. I can quote a lot from that. Um, let me think, what other ones? 
Oh man, of course I'm blanking because I just got asked a question. I'll try not to do that for the whole podcast, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I there were definitely films that I had growing up where like we had them on DVD, um, and so I would just watch those over and over and over again. Um, same if if we had like the series of TV on a DVD, it was just it was what was at the house. We would watch it over and over. I think the only Harry Potter movie we owned was the third one, and. I can do so many lines from that movie, unfortunately. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so did you watch the rest of the Harry Potter films, hopefully? Or Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. That was just the one that we owned, and so <laughs> I wore that DVD out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That is also the one where Hermione punches Draco Malfoy. And at the time I was like, this is the epitome of girl power. Like this is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I've definitely, I definitely have seen all of them at this point. <laughs> Great. So you, you started in acting and then moved to writer director. Like, uh, tell us about that. Like what, what made you decide one way or another, what to do kind of. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, like I said, I've always been a writer, but I didn't realize I was a film writer. And and now I consider myself a film writer. I will say that proudly. But um, so I'd always been a writer. I would I would journal constantly, even as a little kid. There's like pictures of me writing in a random notebook. And I'm like, what the hell am I writing? Um, please tell me if I should not swear. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> okay, come on, like tell me now. Um, but yeah, so I've I've always written a lot. I would read a lot of books, but I, you know, I also had this super strong love of movies and I thought I really wanted to act. And what kind of changed that was kind of a two pronged thing. And it was one, I got into college and was auditioning for a lot of student films. And I did not like the parts that I was kind of getting typecasted as, I guess you could say. Um, or just what was available to someone who looks like me at that age. I didn't like the roles available for young women in student films. <laughs> um, a lot of which were written by, you know, college guys. No problem with that. But I just was looking for something a little meatier than being the girlfriend or the arm candy or something in terms of acting. And then the other part of that is that, you know, there, I was going to college in Northern California. It wasn't like a huge filmmaking scene. So these auditions were not necessarily few and far to come by because there were definitely like classes at the school and everyone had to make a film. But I definitely wanted access to different kinds of roles. Um, and so I just decided to write my own stuff to create those roles, I guess, in a sense. Right. I what think was your first yeah. oh sorry foray like into into writing your own role yeah okay. oh man that's a good question let me think um <laughs> I I can't quite remember what was like the first short script I wrote um I definitely kind of had to get a lot of crappy ones out of my system before I wrote something that I was like oh no this is pretty good <laughs> um but I do remember that I had one college boyfriend who I would ask to read my stuff. And at one point he went, why? <laughs> he was like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's it's okay. But like, why are you always writing about women who are like murderers? <laughs> he was like, this is kind of scary. <laughs> like all your like strong female leads like kill people. <laughs> <laughs> and I just yeah. I'll never forget that because I, I think that's pretty funny because, you know, not that – um you know, valid question on his part, but um, I was definitely looking for kind of these characters that were strong in a sense. And, you know, not that being a murderer and killing is cool, but those were roles that I wasn't seeing in the like student film audition circuit at the time for someone um, kind of of my demographic, I guess, in terms of age and uh, gender. Interesting. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Absolutely, it does. Yeah. And I can totally understand that. Um, <laughs> Thank and you. I love that that's like the genre that you are like, 
the the avenue that you went to with those characters. It's really interesting. Yeah, that was kind of where I originally gravitated. I think it was sort of like a, a pendulum effect where I was so used to auditioning for roles for young women that were like, oh, she's she's the supportive girlfriend or the sidekick or, um, you know, she's hot at the party. And I was just like, no, she kills people. <laughs> Well, not too long ago, there was the Oscars. <laughs> yes. Oh and do you have people in film that inspire you in general? Yes. Yeah. Well, so you mentioned the Oscars, so I'm definitely going to bring up everything everywhere all at once. Um, I think that film was so, so good. I remember watching it almost a year ago and being like, wow, I know the Oscars are a long way away, but I want this to win everything. And now it has. And I feel so great. I'm like, wow, everything is good in the world right now because everything everywhere <laughs> all at once swept. I'm so happy. Um, yes. I love Michelle Yeoh. I'm so glad that she's getting this type of recognition that she doesn't need because she's awesome without it, but she deserves everything she wants. And I'm so glad. Um, Kei Hui Kwan, his speech had me bawling. Um, I will stop fangirling, but it was it was amazing. I also love the Daniel speeches. I think they're such an incredible directing duo. Um, in terms of other kind of influences or inspirations, I guess you could say there's so many. Um, but I think I think unconventional storytelling is really what has my heart. Um, and unconventional storytelling in the sense that it's not what you expect. It turns things on its head, but it still has such an emotional, poignant, significant impact. Um, that's what I really love. And so one that just came to mind as I'm talking is Cheryl Dunier's Watermelon Woman. That's a really incredible film that's very cool in terms of kind of turning the structure of film and the format on its head a little bit for narrative. Um, I also, I love Tarantino. What am I going to say? You know, I love an action movie. I, I love the influence of like East Asian fighting films. Um, I love action movies. Um, also, I, you know, I love sad, poignant, funny indie movies. Um, one of my friends actually, we've never met in real life, but she's an internet friend. Um, Alex Heller, her film has just been released on like the internet. You can rent it on Amazon and stuff. And it's in a few select theaters. So if you see it, definitely check it out. It's called The Year Between. Um, and it's an indie film about taking a gap year off from college and during that time getting diagnosed with bipolar and just kind of handling that with your family. And it is so, so good. That movie's amazing. Um, so I just I just love movies in general, and I could go on all day just kind of listing who I love and what I love about it. But that's kind of what has come to mind in this moment. Um, can you? Um, I assume that this kind of changes the further you get into film and as you grow and learn and and expand and everything. But comparing, you know, when you first started to even now, uh, what have some of the biggest like challenges, Ben, that you've experienced and run into? Um, and how has maybe that varied uh, throughout your career so far? Yeah, in terms of filmmaking myself? Yes, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, that's a great question. I think in the beginning, the biggest challenge I was kind of coming up against was this mental block of doubting myself. I think that's definitely still there, but in the beginning, it felt insurmountable. And it was this thing where I just had to do it and had to be very prepared to fail, very prepared to be like, I'm pouring my heart, soul and everything into this, you know, short film. Um, and if it sucks, you know, whatever, it, what matters is that I did it. Um, and so kind of getting that first one out was really monumental for me because I was like, oh, no, I can do this. Um, I can call myself a filmmaker. I am a filmmaker. I am a storyteller. Um, and then once I was able to do that, the challenges have definitely become more, um, I, I still have self-doubt. I definitely struggle with all of that imposter syndrome. Every time I make something, I'm like, why am I doing this? No one will even want to watch this. Does that even matter? Oh my God. Like the existential spiral. <laughs> but yeah. I think now my problem or the challenges are, <laughs> and I, I, you know, I welcome challenge. Let's do it. But I think now the challenge is like, where am I going to find funding? <laughs> um, 
you know, how can I shoot this from like a technical perspective, this idea that I have as a writer, how can I direct this? How can I get a team together to make this a reality? So the problems have become much more kind of grounded, I guess. And while I still definitely have those existential kind of mental blocks of like, am I really an artist? What am I even saying? Those things, Mm -hmm. I have gotten much better of just kind of turning the volume down. So while they're still there, I'm just like, yes, and (laughs) to all of that. Yes, and I'm still going to make this. We're still going to do it. You know. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I think that it's funny that you say that right after you had just mentioned, um, everything everywhere all at once because again talking about the daniels uh you know they part of the speech was talking about imposter syndrome and yes. kind of one of the many speeches you know like i thought that was such, amazing yeah i love how real that was and you know yes. even if someone at that caliber who makes that level and, and such an amazing incredible movie um also you know struggles with with that yeah. um and I think that that just shows that everyone's like that. That's just like our internal battles, but other people don't see that. And so, um, yeah, it, there's only one way to keep growing and get to the everything everywhere all at once level. And that's just keep <laughs> yes. doing it. So, <laughs> No, for sure. I was like so grateful that Daniel Kwan mentioned that. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, my goodness. Thank you. <laughs> like, yeah. It's so relatable. And you're standing on an Oscar stage. So, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, speaking of feature films, is there a feature film you want to make? Yes, let's talk about it. So <laughs> I, up to this point, have made short films. That's kind of where I've been focusing. Um, and again, kind of, of for that mental thing of like, I need to figure out if I can do it. And so I did it. I've made a few more. Um, And now I think the next thing I really want to conquer is a feature film. So I've been writing. (laughs) I actually have a written feature film kind of in my back pocket. Um, So that's really exciting. It's (laughs) I have a first draft that I'm tuning up. The file document actually says draft like six at this point, but I'm still tuning and it will get there. It's not like going to be you know, in the works for five more years, it will get there soon. (laughs) And I'm very excited to try to do something with it once it's at a point where I'm proud of it and feel like I can really sink years of my life into this because that's what ultimately I hope, you know, oh my goodness, I hope that could be real and happen. Um, And I have so many more ideas. (laughs) So the, the kind of of rough draft that I have right now is a queer action film set in San Francisco. Um, and the next one that I'm like, okay, I got to write this one too now is a sociopolitical thriller. Um, I'm a huge fan of genre movies. I'm a huge fan of really low budget down to earth. Also like slice of life indie movies. I want to do it all really, <laughs> which sounds ambitious, but you know, all those Oscar speeches, they were like, you know, dream big. So Screw it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. it sounds amazing. So thank you. Yeah. Um. So as you're kind of making those plans and writing these scripts and thinking of all the exciting, amazing things, the films that you want to make, um, what's like maybe one of the biggest things that really drive you that you look forward to that you you know get you kind of jazzed up when you think, okay, I'm gonna actually make this movie. Like, what's something that maybe your favorite part to look forward to? Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's such a like positive way to look at things. And I love that. I'm like, yeah, let me kind of speak into existence these things that I'm really looking forward to. Um, I, I love being on set. Um, I think that's part of what's driven me to be a writer, a director is I love being on set. I also love every aspect of movie making. And I think that's another thing that kind of took me Um, not away from acting, but just to like explore other stuff is that, you know, if you're an actor, you're there for a set amount of time, you, you do your scene and then you, you leave and then maybe come back for another scene. I want to be there for everything. I want control. (laughs) I think that's definitely another one of those things where with acting, I was like, but maybe we can do this or like, this could be like this. Like I want control and I love being collaborative. I love working with people. Um, but I love having my hand in all the pies. (laughs) Um, and so back to your question, kind of what I'm looking forward to is it's just the process, um, like taking something, 
I love that something can start as an idea in someone's head and through so much freaking work <laughs> can become a film. And I love I love being on set. I love being collaborative. I love being amazed by other people's talent and what they can bring to a story. Um, you know, I think the script is one of the first steps, but there's so many people who can bring so much to a film, like production design and cinematography and the lighting. Like people can bring so much and be so creative and having all of that compound as um, a piece of art is just so, so beautiful to me. And ultimately I really love the movie watching experience. I love being in a theater and being transported and just, you know, um, what's that word? Suspending my disbelief. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. I just love suspending my disbelief and letting images and sound like wash over you and forgetting that there was so, so much work put into this and just being taken on a ride by a story. So right. all of it, <laughs> basically all of it. So you love the process. That's your favorite thing. That's I just... love the process. Yes. So throughout the process, since um, you've done all, it sounds like all the roles, many, if not all, maybe. I've, um, I've definitely done many. There are definitely roles where I'm like, I would never want to be, you know, the lead gaffer or the lead editor. Like I think someone else's expertise will do much better there. I definitely think of myself as a writer director and that's where my expertise is. And that's where I focus and I want to let other people kind of shine in their expertise and areas and bring what they can bring. Mm -hmm. um, but I have, you know, working on short films, micro crews, all of that kind of thing. I have done a lot of stuff myself for some of these short films I've done. <laughs> right. Out of necessity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just like with writing, you mentioned like, so you weren't finding the roles, so you had to make them. So Right. A lot of it is born of necessity, but has really become such a passion. Mm, interesting. And also, I think, pushed me to kind of acknowledge and stand in my own power. <laughs> um, because I think I'm so glad that I'm now writing I'm, for film. I'm so glad that I'm now directing. But I think it did come from a place of like, I'm not finding what I want in this arena, I guess, where I was. And not that it's not out there, but just where I was, the people I was around, I was like, I want to do something different. And so I did it on my own. And now I love doing that. And I love working with other people that are doing that. Yeah. And talk about your film that played here at Twin Cities Film Fest. Um, yeah. Talk to us about that. Yeah, sure. That was so fun. Um, so that short film is called Interlands. Um, made up word, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, so that can be found on my Vimeo channel actually now, if anyone listening wants to go check that out. Uh, <laughs> that short film is, it's about five minutes long, and it's basically the way I kind of really short give an idea is it's a music video for poetry. It's four original poems, and then imagery to go along with that, and it kind of weaves together this narrative of having a breakdown and through that learning more about yourself and being empowered by the messiness of living, <laughs> which I hope is relatable. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Got it. And yeah. shot in the Bay area. Yeah. Shot all around the Bay area. Um, we went all the way from, let me think we went all the way from, Berkeley to Santa Cruz, which is about two and a half hours, but <laughs> yeah, all, all through there. Um, yeah. And it was, so it's five minutes long, which I have made much longer short films, but this definitely was the longest shoot, like shooting period mm -hmm. of my career <laughs> because we were all over the place. I had very specific visuals I wanted to capture. We even got to shoot at the Castro theater in SF, which is a historic oh, landmark, wow. which was awesome. So yeah, it's really cool. Wow. Man, I'm going to, I'm going to ask a non, I mean, it's, <laughs> we're going to make it a film question, but it, Alan knows where I'm going with this. Um, <laughs> but it just be for my own selfish reasons. Have you ever shot in or around like Walnut Creek, Pleasant Hill, like that kind of area in the Bay? Ooh. Um, okay. My geography sucks, but I know. Where oh, Creek is. it's like, um, oh gosh, it's from like the, from the bay it's maybe 30 minutes 
south yes. east a little bit or like an hour yeah. uh, I've made a minutes. return at their Nordstrom yeah. <laughs> Like it's <laughs> like a big mall area. That's all okay. I got to Walnut Creek. I, I love it. Something online. I was like, oh, I got to go to Walnut Creek. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> no, that area is super cool. I actually had a coworker who worked around there and would always send us like pictures of wild turkeys just roaming yeah. Walnut Creek. Um, I love it. I don't think we went that direction. I think we um, we Stay shot north. some stuff right off like the 180 freeway mm-hmm. in Berkeley. There's like a pier, a random yeah. pier. Um, we were going to shoot at the Pacifica Pier, but we got there and it was chock a block full of fishermen or fisher people, which is <laughs> very cool. Yeah. But we were like, oh, wow, this, this is not kind of what we conceptualized. Yeah. <laughs> so we found we found a pier off the highway. Um, yeah, we went all over. We were in Santa Cruz in some national park. Oh, my gosh. There are these shots of me. Um, I, I act in Interlands. Um yeah, so yeah, it, it's actually the first short film that I wrote and directed that I also acted in um, because I felt I had um, written and directed some other short films and I, you know, had seen kind of what happens and gotten over that mental block. And I was like, I think I can do this. And it's original poetry, so it felt quite personal and vulnerable. So I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll act in it too. But there are some shots of me, the protagonist, played by me, um, on this Santa Cruz beach, just very wet water, lots of water. And it was so cold because <laughs> oh. it's the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. so cold, but it was also so fun. And I, I had such a blast kind of driving up and down um, all over the bay and then up and down um, the, yes, what do you call it? The peninsula? Just yeah. down from San Francisco, a little coast. more south to Santa Cruz. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Oh man. Also, I'm like, wait, is Santa Cruz North? That would be so embarrassing. My geography sucks. <laughs> I'll just leave it. You're good. My just <laughs> you're fine. Yeah. Also I didn't uh, grow up in the States. I don't know where you, I uh, Are you a Warriors fan too? Or oh nice. I mean, you kind of have to be. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not that I'm not. Not that someone held a gun to my head, but like it's just <laughs> yeah. so everyone is yes, yes. I don't watch sport ball very much um, <laughs> but i am I love a fan that. i am a fan of anyone from here i love it yeah i love that and my oh connection my to minnesota is that my grandparents live there so i went every summer oh <laughs> that's yeah. really sweet oh i have I another that. fun fact i i'm talking a lot but it's a podcast so i i hope it's okay. <laughs> that's, if you weren't this would be very boring so <laughs> you're good <laughs> thank god <laughs> Um, yeah, so actually the Twin Cities Film Festival was held at the West End Shops, whatever mm-hmm. that um, area compound is called with all those shops and restaurants and stuff. And my first summer job ever as like a sophomore or junior in high school during that summer was at one of those restaurants as a host. <laughs> I would like greet customers coming in and then I got to go back last year and go to the film festival as a writer director and that was so so cool and it felt so first full circle in a sense even though you know i'm hoping this whole thing keeps going this whole filmmaking thing but that moment was really cool because i was like i was just down the street bored out of my fucking mind (laughs) 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 for like eight hour shifts and now we're at the movie theater attending a festival as a you know as a selected filmmaker yeah that's uh, amazing. The American right, dream, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right there. Yeah. <laughs> Me and exactly. Craig Just American a half dream. a block down the road. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that oh. was very cool. When I figured out like where it was going to be held, I was like, oh, mm-hmm. shit. That's, <laughs> that's where I worked that really shitty summer job. <laughs> <laughs> love it you just walk in like this is where I'm at now, man. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs> yeah. Take that. <laughs> I'm eating here now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Serve me. <laughs> so and I will tip well because I know. <laughs> like, yeah. Yes. Right. I know. Same thing. Anytime I go anywhere now that I've been a server, I'm just like, oh, I'm going to yes. over tip because I Every know time. that you have people who are going to give you a dollar on like a hundred dollar tab. And so you get it. all of it. Yeah. Yes. I'm like um, 50%. <laughs> yes, exactly. I wish, I wish I could every time, but yes, right. I always try to tip very well yeah. because I, I'm like, yeah, this, the, the service industry. <laughs> yeah. It's, a lot. it's rough. <laughs> yeah. Um, so 
you kind of touched on on uh we've touched on a couple of things when it comes to you know films that or filmmakers that have been most inspiring to you um and genres and now that you touched on the oscars a little bit i'm <laughs> curious i'm going to kind of merge and combine a tiny bit not really yeah. um since you saw everything everywhere all at once about a year ago Yes. Um, are there any big films that stand out in the past year since then that have really stuck with you? Whether it's just, man, I was just so entertained that I can't, like, I just love it so much or yeah. stuck with you as a writer, filmmaker, mm. all of that. Yeah. Cool. Um, I love this question because <laughs> I have like a very short term memory. So you're like in the past year and I'm like, oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like that too. <laughs> Cool. Um, no. So yeah, let me think. I, well, I just watched Triangle of Sadness. I'm a little late, but I just, it just got to streaming. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I thought that was pretty incredible. Um, I, I definitely laughed out loud like that. It was, <laughs> it was very fun, but also mm -hmm. I, I think the most impactful part for me is the like hellscape boat scene where they're in a storm and everyone is oh god it was so yes gross. it was so oh, gross. gross but the part I cannot get out of my head is the captain and the Russian <laughs> like oligarch guy yeah the overspeaker trading like pro-capitalist and pro-marxist quotes yeah I, I just thought that was I don't know why I'm like that's genius and then one line that stuck with me from that movie that I also love I'm fangirling again but is when <laughs> Yaya goes the guy is like he's like I'm just defending myself and she goes you defending yourself is hurting her or is causing her pain or something yeah. like that. and I was just like oh my god that's such a good line like yes wow so that was that was pretty great um this wasn't in the past year, but this director has a new film coming out very soon, and I'm so excited. So it's Emma Seligman. I hope I'm saying that last name right, but she wrote and directed Shiva Baby. Um, if y'all haven't seen it, I suggest it so much. It's a one location film or like, you know, one kind of one setting type film. Yeah. And it's um, this young woman who's like on a break from college and she has to go with her parents to a Shiva. Um, which is a Jewish, it's like after you go to the funeral, you go to the Shiva mm -hmm. um, and you hang out and eat. Um, and it's so good. It's so tense. It's so funny. Um, and Emma Sligman's new film just premiered at South by Southwest, like literally yesterday or the day before. And it's called Bottoms. And I'm so excited. It has Rachel Sinow, Senate, Senate in it, who was the star of Shiva Baby. And it also stars Ayo Edabiri, who is the sous chef in The Bear, which is a, such a good TV show that came oh, out this year that I love. Yeah. Yes. And then because I said that, my mind is like a ping pong table shifting to the movie <laughs> that I watched in the last year. I loved Severance so much. I thought Severance was so good. Yes. 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 <laughs> I'm so mad at how it ended because I oh my God. found out mm. almost immediately after that we're going to have to wait until like, like maybe 2025 20, for season two. No. I was Not like, how? They, yeah, they were like, it's going to take at least a year to to film, and they hadn't yeah. started yet. And I was like, oh my god, Ugh. I can't. Why did I watch it right now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. What did I do? Why did I binge it in two days? And now yes. I have to wait like three years. Oh, so heartbreaking. That it, show is yeah, so, good. so good. Also, I have to honorable mention Alan's screensaver is or like the background behind him and Zoom is Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I loved that anime so much. I bawled. Mm -hmm. um, and then mind is like a freaking ping pong chaos. <laughs> uh, anime movies that I watched in the last year that were amazing. I watched Paprika for the first time, which is an old movie from the 90s, but it is so, so good. Inception's hallway scene is from Paprika, like shot mm -hmm. for shot. Oh, interesting. It is so good. Um, it's also just insane animation, like, so incredible and that story is really really amazing i love that director he also did um perfect blue oh yeah so same director as perfect blue and that film is 
so, so good. Although, you know, I, I'm saying that I love all these films and I'm fangirling, but I can critique anything also. So that's like the <laughs> other half of it. And I feel like as a filmmaker, that's a really good drive is being like, I love this, but this could have been different or I would have done yeah. this different. And I think that's where a lot of inspiration comes from too. Um, and I really Absolutely. appreciate that. Yeah. So with Perfect Blue, I did actually watch um, Requiem for Dream. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. And, <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, I was talking to someone about that in Perfect Blue. And then Darren Aronofsky was supposed to make that film, but never did. But he put all the shots into different movies yes. that he made, like Black Swan. Oh. and Yeah. Oh, my God. And, and I love Black Swan. <laughs> yeah. 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 But like all these shots that came from anime and it's just yep. like I should get it into my anime head. more. It's, just I know. Like, it's like a little side <laughs> eye because it's cause some of these shots are like everything. It's like the lighting's the same, the composition mm. is exact, mm. like and it's like, whoa, like I know that the expression, like, you know, um, you know, imitation is the highest form of flattery and like yep. be a good thief if you're taking ideas from places and I love yep. that I'm always paying homage and everything I do but sometimes you're like it's it's cool to see that and be like oh no you can steal something freaking shot for shot <laughs> <laughs> right. you know be, be cognizant of doing it and be like know what you're doing and yeah pay respect and all of that but it's it's interesting to see masters and then see oh no you were just taking from another master <laughs> yeah yeah, but I find that weird, though, that he never made the film, but then in incorporated those shots into those other films he made. And it is weird. It is I, weird. I wonder about the whale. Like, what what's in there? That oh, just, yeah. Interesting. Is there something from Perfect Blue that was in there? <laughs> Apparently, Perfect Blue was originally supposed to be live action, but one of the investors backed out last minute, and so they mm. switched to anime which i'm like wait mm. animation sounds expensive also but i guess this was yeah. in japan where there was much a much bigger industry for anime at the time than live action maybe oh. um, i i don't know so please don't quote me on any of this <laughs> it's just me kind of theorizing like what, oh what well never like, mind then yeah no <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. So uh, can you uh, kind of hopping back to just like your career and everything that you've done yeah, you know, from <laughs> from when you when you really started, um, you know, started out acting and and doing theater all the way, moving into film and then growing into writing and directing, and now you're looking at doing a feature. Has your career so far kind of maybe progressed as as you had thought or wanted, and and where where are you wanting it to maybe go from here like one one feature you want to do <laughs> all the features or like do you have other other goals that you wanted to so it's kind of a two-pronged question Just yeah no, that. that's great um so I, I'm like okay thinking back when, <laughs> yeah so I think as a kid I was like you know by 15 I should have been discovered and <laughs> yeah. launched to stardom, you know? Yeah. And, um, and now I'm very grateful that didn't happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, for, for multiple reasons. And, but um, yeah, I, I think now the pursuit is very much not like fame mm -hmm. <laughs> and it wasn't necessarily when I was a kid, but since actors are kind of the forward facing, they're like the face first of the movies. I was yeah. like, Oh, that is movies. Um, and now I'm like, Oh, there's so much more to it. And I want all of, all of it, not just um, the, the, the roles. Yeah. Basically. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy with where I am. I, I, you know, I think, all artists kind of struggle of like, oh, I should be further or mm -hmm. I should be doing more or, you know, um, mm -hmm. if I was a Nepo baby, I could be, <laughs> <laughs> right. you know, where, yeah. where would I be? But <laughs> if I yeah. had connection, but I, you know, I'm very grateful for where I am and I'm very grateful for the support I've had from my family. You know, they may not be an old Hollywood family, but they've been very supportive of um, a, non-traditional dream I guess mm -hmm. you could say um just in the sense that you know I think a lot of people dream of Hollywood or fame or whatever I 
I like, I want to tell myself that I dream more of storytelling and Mm -hmm. telling stories and getting messages across through stories and that it's not about money and fame. And I I don't think it is for me. Um, But I think those things do provide like a bigger platform. And when you're making independent films, like you can't ignore money or the lack thereof. Mm -hmm. Um, So I've kind of, I've kind of rambled off, but um, I, I'm really happy with where I'm at. And I think throughout growing up, I've struggled with, oh, I should be further or, you know, oh, Mm -hmm. I wish, I wish this was great expectations where a wealthy benefactor would Mm -hmm. anonymously contact me and be like, make whatever you want. Like, here's money. (laughs) Like that would be, Uh, but I'm also kind of excited. And, you know, this fluctuates from excitement to hopelessness but I'm also kind of excited about the prospect of having to really fight <laughs> tooth and nail mm-hmm. to right. get my ideas out there and make something and it's a challenge but you know I want to be up to the challenge and so that's what I'm striving for and then kind of addressing the last part of your question um this is what I want to do I want it to be feature after feature I want to be prolific <laughs> I, you know, I want it all and I, I dream very big and maybe it won't all happen, but if I can just keep trying, I think that'll make me happy. And I think that's Mm -hmm. what's most important and what I need to keep um, sight of (laughs) is happiness and not, you know, success, (laughs) capitalist success. (laughs) Yeah. What, uh, when I think about that, yeah, a lot of the film stuff is, um, an independent film, especially very hard to get through to, because it's always like, okay, you have like, they mentioned it at the Oscars too, just how movies move at like years at a time. And like social media moves at milliseconds. It's just like, like the crawl versus the sprint, you know, it's just like, yeah. um, I thought that was also such an interesting moment of that speech where I'm like, wow, that, that one sentence gives me so much to think about. And is so true. And I expect nothing less from the dance. <laughs> <laughs> right. So with that in mind, like you, you kind of alluded to your feature film, like what do you want to devote your time to next? But yeah. uh, what is the next thing for you? Is it like still putting your short into festivals or is that run done or like what? Yeah, yeah. What's, what's the next thing, actually? Um, well, so in the immediate, uh, Interlands is going to be screening at um, the Poppy Jasper Film Festival in Northern California in March. And then at the end of April, it's going to be screening at uh, the Poetry Film Festival in Los Angeles. So mm-hmm. that's the immediate next steps is I am going to go to those. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and, and show my face. Um so I'm, I'm very excited about that. I'm not uh, submitting Interlands to film festivals anymore, but I am still waiting to hear, sorry, excuse me. I am still waiting to hear back from uh, a couple fel- a couple festivals. Um, Interlands has been really amazing because it's, it's getting into a lot of festivals. And I, I don't say that kind of casually. Um, the other two films I made did not get into as many festivals and, I, you know, I stand by them. I think they're great. And I think that's totally fine that they didn't. It's so nebulous and such a lottery in some senses, but I am so grateful that Interlands is really resonating with some people programming some festivals and it's, it's really given me so much hope and um, just made me feel good. (laughs) (laughs) Acknowledgement is nice. Um, So that's kind of the immediate future. I'm just waiting to hear back from a few more of those. Um, And then I have those two festivals to attend. So if anyone's going to be in Northern California or Los Angeles, um, March and then end of April, let me know. Um, I'm very down to hang. (laughs) And then um, in terms of the future, I think right now, since it's not, since I don't have a feature script that's fully polished, that I'm fully like ready to pitch, um, I, I mean, I can do the pitch, but I, you know, I, I want to make it a little tighter. Uh, <laughs> I am just going to do kind of what I've always done, which is focus on the writing and just really give everything to the writing. And then once that's done, I'll figure it out. But 
if I don't have a really strong base in the writing and faith in my writing and like completely believe in what I've written and like, I will sink five years of my life into this. Um, I, I need that first and it's, it's coming. It's that's also immediate future. But once that happens, I am definitely, it, I think it all comes from that for me. It all comes from the writing um, because that's what I can control the most. Um, yeah, not to sound like a control freak, but <laughs> <laughs> no, that I, makes sense. I totally get that. I do understand. It's like you want to be in every place all at once as a director because you know what you want. Sometimes, yeah. you know, usually yeah. if you know what you want, you know what you want. But yeah, giving up that control and trusting others to follow through yeah. what they do is. It is tricky in independent film. It can be. It yeah. is. It's made me grow as a person because I've had to trust more, which mm. is healthy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I cannot believe that people will actually pleasantly surprise you and blow your mind. And because right. I, I don't know. I I've been a cynic, and I've been, <laughs> I've been like, oh, you know, um, I I used to be that person in group projects at school that was like, you know what, I'll just do everything. Mm. <laughs> But I've had to grow and I've had to, like you said, trust and give a bit of that, you know, not give, but let, let go a little bit, not not mm -hmm. hold on with such a white knuckled fist. Mm -hmm. And it's really amazing what people can do and what they can add. And like I said, creativity compounds and just makes such beautiful, beautiful things. And I love being collaborative and working with creative people who are also visionaries. I love that. Um, all right. So we've got our, our couple final big, well, one is a helpful question and one is a big question. Oof. Um, <laughs> so helpful question. Uh, where can, you know, where can people find your work? Where can they follow you, support <laughs> you? Like how, you know, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Self promo. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I am on Instagram too much, but my Instagram, <laughs> my Instagram handle is Alia Sky 11, A L I A Sky 11. Um, I, I spelled my name out because no one ever knows how to spell it. <laughs> um, so Alia Sky 11 on Instagram. I post um, about my filmmaking, I post about the festivals we're getting into um, and stuff like that. Um, and then I also have a Vimeo account, which is where you can watch all of my short films to date. There's three of them. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, my Vimeo name is, or the, the name of my account is just Alia Brandt. So my name, um, A-L-I-A-B-R-A-N-D-T. <laughs> no one ever knows how to spell either of them. Um, <laughs> And yeah, hopefully we can maybe share a link to that. That would be really great. Oh. Um, so I'll send that along to you guys to do with what you will. Um, so yes, I have Instagram. I have Vimeo. I'm also on LinkedIn. If anyone wants to, you know, go <laughs> their LinkedIn network, I will accept. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. Uh, yeah, and um, I'm based in Northern California. So if any filmmakers are listening or if you guys are ever out in that area, please hit me up. I would love to get a coffee, get lunch, whatever. Um, yeah. And Rihanna, if you ever go to Kenya, I would love to give you um, suggestions for places. Oh my gosh. It's Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. You'll be my first contact as soon as I get to plan that out. So awesome. Yeah, um, please <laughs> do it. Please do it. I think it would be amazing. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Life changing for sure. <laughs> um, all right. So the big one. Okay. What do you I'm ready. Right, breathe? <laughs> center. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What do you want people to remember most about you? Whether it's from working with you, from watching your films, just anything at all. Oh man, yes. Uh, oof. <laughs> this is such a big question. You said mm -hmm. it was a big question. It really is. I think for people working with me, I just hope they remember that it was a good experience. I know the film industry can be brutal for crew. Um, and talent. I It can be brutal. And I just hope that if I am <laughs> back to Triangle of Sadness, if I'm the captain yeah. of a project, <laughs> that it's a good experience for people and that they felt they could be creative and fulfilled in some way. Um, that's mm -hmm. what I hope for that. And then for people watching my films, you know, I haven't made them all yet, but more to come. Yeah. Um, but I hope that 
it's something along the lines of, I don't have a great thesis statement for this, but something along the lines of like, you know, fuck the status quo. <laughs> uh, Love it. the fascists. No, but <laughs> just, you know, kind of, um, yeah, you, I think the world spews a lot of falsehoods at us in order to kind of keep people down. And I just hope to kind of speak truth to that power that's, keeping people down oh man yeah. <laughs> no i really do mean it i think i am yes. at heart even though i can be cynical and mm-hmm. i just you know i want the world to be a better place <laughs> i like it i'm Thank all for you. it Thank yes you so much the support <laughs> <is alive. laughs> this is that's what i'm here for uh <laughs> well Thank you again so, so much for taking the time out of your night and hanging out with us and answering all of our questions. Um, It was really fun getting to meet you and learn about you uh, in your career. You too. And Alan, it was so nice to see you again. Um, And I'm so glad you hit me up to do this. I really am super grateful to both of you. This was so fun. I love talking about movies. Uh, I don't mind talking about me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we we hope to have you film in minnesota maybe someday and yeah. or ah. bring your films back to minnesota so i will and I, I do visit my grandparents a lot so i will probably hit y'all there up it, is. <laughs> Heck there yeah. it is i like it yeah okay yeah. good okay good right. okay we're friends now well, <laughs> and, yes it's, it's done it's already set it's official. <laughs> all right well to our listeners thanks for uh, shining in and until next time this has been film in minnesota <laughs>